This series will be based on the novel The Theory of Light by Sipiwe and Lovu. It is an IEB matric set workbook. With the plot summary, I will be focusing on specific chapters and summarising them. Before we start, we have to look at what the title means. The theory is that if one person can do something, others will follow. The idea of flight is a deep and strong belief that is not bound to reality and has no restrictions. Within the prologue, we see a summary of the brief events that need to be told in relation to Jeannie's story. There's also a sense of foreshadowing which we can see with Jeannie's death. We also come to the understanding that Jeannie's life and death was the result of interconnected events and choices made by her and other characters. Book 1. Genealogy, an account of one's line of descent. So the first chapter starts off with Genesis, and we see that the birth of Jeannie is something magical, and this happens in the form of a golden egg after Goleda and Elizabeth spend the night. We are also shown Goleda's father, Baines Dikiti, who is a successful businessman and loved to travel, and that is how he met Goleda's mother. She was the only one who could resist his charm. Goleda is an albino and therefore his father is embarrassed of him and continues to travel before committing suicide by walking into the ocean. Prudence, Goleda's mother, raises him and his younger sister to have character. Goleda grows up to be a natural leader and joins the freedom fighters. He changes his name to Goleda Gumede, as he was initially named Livingstone Stanley Takiti. He studied aeronautical science and later on meets Elizabeth and conjures up a dream to build an aeroplane so that he may fly her to Tennessee to live out her dream of being a country singer. Due to the fact that it's expensive to build a plane, he decides to shoot down the Vickers Viscount for parts. He also then witnesses elephants crossing the Zambezi River, which gives him the confidence and bravery to continue out with his plan. He then has a vision of Jeannie's birth. History. Beaufort. This chapter details the events that occurred at or related to Beaufort Farm and Estate. The Vickers Viscount crash was traced from Gilede to Beatrice Bate Beaufort and then to the Beaufort Farm and Estate. We come to learn that Bennington, Beatrice's father, moved to the colonies where he could afford land, founded the estate and left it to his daughter after he passed. We also come to know that Beatrice is a liberal-minded woman and stood for African rights, especially during the time of colonialism and turned the farm into a commune. Beatrice is connected to Emil Kutsia. He is her best friend Cookie's husband. He is also the head of the Organization of Domestic Affairs. He employs Mordecai, also known as C-10, to spy and torture suspects. One day he is ordered to torture Menentle, Gulide's sister, and she doesn't break her silence. Therefore, the man who had nothing to have allegiance to finally found something to have one for. As we notice that, or we are told that he comes from a background where he couldn't trust anybody. He was alone and always had to fight for himself. He then changed everything about him, including the way he speaks, and reintroduced himself to Minetle later on, and she didn't even recognize him. Tandi Hadebe a beautiful young woman and a student of Menentles is mocked and thrown into a pit latrine by soldiers. She meets Elizabeth, who is new to the farm, and follows her advice to become a model. She only returns to the farm to give birth to her son Marcus and leave him with his grandparents before leaving for America. That is when Jeannie and Marcus's friendship begins. The next chapter details Marcus and Jeannie's relationship. They find an atlas and imagine life beyond the farm and how they would explore together. Jeannie discovers the sunflowers planted by Bennington for Beatrice, and she begins to fall in love with them, and even grieves when they die. Marcus does not share the same interest. 
Instead, he takes interest in an abandoned car which he christens Brown Car. He then begins to visit it secretly until Jeannie finds out. Jeannie is treasured by her mother and has a relationship filled with love and laughter. Bath time is filled with giggles, songs, warm water in an enamel cast iron tub. Whereas we see a contrast between Marcus's relationship with his grandmother. His body is scrubbed with a coarse face cloth as his grandmother lectures him about germs while he stands in a zinc galvanized steel bucket which is filled with just enough cold water to make him clean. In this chapter, Gulida returns and is welcomed with open arms. Jeannie is immediately drawn to him, but never excluded Marcus, as she even included him in their hug. Marcus feels a deep sense of belonging with their family. His parents return and abruptly take him with them to America. Him and Jeannie are separated. Becky Timber In this chapter, we understand who Becky Timber is. He visits Beaufort Farm and Estate, but the circumstances that lead him there are very important. In 1980, he attended the ceremony to celebrate the new independence of the former colony. Initially, he is disappointed and sad because he was influenced by his grandfather, whose greatest pride was that he had shaken various members of the British royal family's hands. In the end, he realises that he is actually hopeful. He is inspired by the revolutionary music of Bob Marley and is disappointed by Prince Charles' looks. He becomes a real revolutionary. After he writes about his experience, the man himself offers him a bursary to study journalism. But he soon learns that this comes with a price. The man himself has an ulterior motive, where he can only write stories he is instructed to write, which in turn benefits the man himself. He is instructed to write a story about a crazy man and his cult. He wants to find the real reason, or another reason besides love as to why Goliath was inspired to build the plane. He visits the estate and is greeted by Jeannie, who takes him home to see Goliath. Goliath tells him about his experience with the elephants at Victoria Falls, and thus he comes up with his article. Justina. After Biggy Timber published his article, Beaufort was attacked by soldiers. The deaths of innocents were horrific, senseless, and intentional. The soldiers were looking for Gulide, and residents asked Jeannie where her parents were. She said that they had flown away, and the residents believed that they truly ran away. They told Justina to take Jeannie away from the farm and to never return. Jeannie decides she will choose her own endings from now on, because her life has been turned upside down by other people's doing. Justina is forced also during this time to poison Marcus's grandparents.